The Giants open up a three-day rookie minicamp. What are our expectations and what's this current state of the Giants roster? Ed Valentine of Big Blue View joins me to discuss all that next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. Patricia Trainer here with you. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Giants podcast your first listen of the day, or if watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. And if you're watching on YouTube, you get to see my smiling, shiny face, as well as that of Ed Valentine's smiling, shiny face. Ed Valentine, of course, good friend from Big Blue View, SB Nation. Edward, happy to see you on the program. Happy to be here, Patty. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna say something about my shining bald head, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> I should have, you know, especially since you made a crack about my hair on your show. But oh, I didn't. I'm going to be the bigger person. All right then. <laughs> I'm going to be the bigger person. All so. right, as you usually are. As I usually am, because you know you can't beat me when it comes down to these squabbles. But anyway, nope, can't do it. Anyway, Giant fans, we are going to talk, uh, we're going to get you ready for um, Rookie Minicamp, which is this weekend. It actually starts today, so we've got a special show here to get you ready for that. We're going to talk a little bit about the direction the Giants are going in, and of course the NFL schedule is out um, as you hear this. The schedule has been released, so we'll just talk a little bit about the need for a fast start and all that good stuff. So all that's coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. Happy to have you with us. Edward, let's start with this rookie mini camp real quick. Um, what are your expectations to see from this 11 member draft class? And I, and I think they're going to bring in what, at least 10. I think I saw 71 players on the roster. So they've got room for a lot of UDFAs. Yeah, they do. For me, Patty, it's always about finding out which guys look like, look like they're, I don't want to say NFL ready, but look like they belong because you always find, you know, guys who, who look confused guys who, who look out of place. But for me, especially with the draft picks, you just want to see that these guys look like they belong on an NFL field. So for me, that's important. I mean, you just, you watch how they go through drills. You watch how they conduct themselves you watch how they interact with their teammates as much as you can in, let's be honest, what are going to be two very brief practices over the two days that we have access. I think both of those practices are an hour and 15 minutes, so we're not going to see a whole lot on the field. We will get to talk to a lot of these guys, so we'll get to some, uh, some interaction with them you know, in that setting as well. Now, the important thing, I mean, just based on what we know about the schedule, from what I can tell, it's going to be more about learning as opposed to doing. You know, in other words, you can put these guys out on the field and you can have them run around and you can have them doing all kinds of drills. But I kind of get the the early impression that what Joe, uh, I'm sorry, what Brian Dable is trying to do is get these guys in get them comfortable, say, okay, look, here's the playbook. Here's what we, we need you to do and understand, and then let them go out there and, and be able to, you know, run around and execute it. But hence why maybe the practices are a little shorter than what we're accustomed to seeing, as opposed to, you know, doing two practices like way back in the old days. Right. Well, what people need to remember, Patty, is that all of these guys are finding their way around the facility. They're all new to the building. The draft picks all got to come in, you know, and, and, and meet and greet, but they were in the building. They were around for a day or less than that. So these guys are all, they're getting acclimated to their surroundings. They're getting acclimated to their new coaching staff. They're learning the playbook. They're, they're walking around the building, you know, learning the names of the people who who handle the equipment, who work in the kitchen. They're 
they're learning how they're expected to practice, where they're expected to be, when they're expected to be there. So what we see on the field isn't going to be perfect. This is this is more like acclimation for these guys just to begin to understand, you know, who the people are in the building and, and how they're going to be expected to do things. You know, you mentioned something that I wanted to, to actually bring up, and that was they did bring in most of the draft picks into the building. They brought in, obviously, the two first rounders. Then they brought in day two's picks. And I thought that was a very subtle but yet under reported um, occurrence and the reason for that is as you mentioned you know these kids come in and they're already nervous you know because it's like oh my god this is actually work this isn't college anymore where you know I, I if I screw up I'm still gonna be okay I'm gonna get paid for this so they come in and it was an opportunity for most of them to learn where everything is where's the lunchroom where's the locker room who do I go to see if I have an equipment problem who do I go to see if I need medical treatment, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, you know, and from from what I, it wouldn't surprise me, but I've, I've been talking with some of the coaches of uh, some of the undrafted free agents, and some of them have told me that some of these kids have actually shown up as early as Wednesday. So they've come in Wednesday. Um, a lot of them, I think, are coming in by Thursday to get their physicals, their equipment and everything. So they can get that acclimation period of where's the auditorium where are the meeting rooms get that all out of the way so they can focus on learning in the classrooms which i think is going to be you know a, a big thing it's it's going to make a difference as opposed to just showing up on thursday you know on friday morning and saying here i am okay now what do i do yeah absolutely because this is a this is a new experience for for all of these kids and we still have to remember they are kids these are 21 22 year old young men who are finding their way into the world yeah and, and the football world you know and no veterans around to, to help them obviously because the veterans will be uh have been dismissed for for the weekend now in terms of the field stuff there will be no pads there will be no contact probably a lot of drills what are you hoping to see or what what do you think you know this, this group can show, despite the fact that it's still a learning process, there's, it's going to be sloppy. Uh, it's not going to be true, quote unquote, real football. But what are you looking to, to I don't want to say get out of it, but, you know, what do you want to come away with after these two days are, of media access are done? Well, you obviously want to see how these guys move around the field. You want to see, you know, if I think, as I said before, you want to see if it if it looks and feels like they belong out there. Interestingly to me, Patty, I think that that for you and I, maybe even more interesting, more important than than what we see on the field is is getting a chance to talk to a lot of these guys after practice, getting a chance to see how they conduct themselves. Are they comfortable? Are they well spoken? You know, how do they how do they? interact with the media i remember you remember daniel jones's rookie rookie camp right and we sat there and we had we 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 all had a good chuckle at watching darius slayton drop pass after pass after pass after pass in two days of rookie minicamp and we know that Darius Slayton went on to have a really good rookie season, which is partially a lesson in, you know, don't take everything that you see in those two days as gospel. But for me, the most impressive part of all of that was listening to Daniel Jones speak after those practices and take responsibility and defend his teammate and and basically say, I have to throw him better balls. I have to throw him easier balls to catch. And for me, you know, Daniel Jones has not gone on to be a star quarterback. But for me, I thought we learned a lot more about Daniel Jones in the post-practice press conferences than we learned about anybody on the field. And we learned that he was an Eli clone because that's exactly what Eli he always used to say when something went astray. Right. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, mind you, but that was no. the takeaway I had. Right. Exactly. But, I, but, your, but your point's well taken. You know, sometimes with how a guy speaks, you know, and what he says in, in response to some of the questions, 
gives you insight into his what he's thinking and or how he's thinking and how he's going to handle success versus failure and that's that's half the battle right there because you know if you get a guy who can't handle failure well pack it in buddy you might as well go find a different profession all right, Giant fans, still more to come on this special edition of the Locked on Giants podcast as we break down the Giants 2022 schedule. But first, Bet Online is the only place that offers the best information on the latest odds, contests, and player props for all your sports betting needs. No matter what sport you're into, BetOnline.net has you covered. Plus, they offer everything you need to know for live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head on over to BetOnline.net today to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Ed, of the draft class, 11 members, which guys are you most uh, curious to, to uh, learn more about? Oh, Patty, for me, that starts with Wandale Robinson. Okay. Because, you know, I think we all know that taking Wandale Robinson at 43 was the pick that raised the most eyebrows for the Giants. The more that I've studied the pick, the more that I've talked to people about the pick, the more that I've talked to Robinson's coaches, the more I understand what the Giants might have seen. But I want to see it for myself. I want to see how he moves around. I want to see how he catches the ball. I want to see, you know, as I've said before, does it, does he look like he belongs? Does he look like it's too big for him? Um, the Giants were very adamant that they had a very clear vision for how they wanted to use Wandale Robinson in this offense. And I don't know if we're going to get any clues on that Friday and Saturday, but we might, you know, just based on the kind of routes we see the kid run and, you know, whether we see him doing returning and, and things like that. But, but for me, I think the curiosity starts with, with absolutely with Wandale Robinson. Yeah, I mean, I think all eyes are going to be on him because that was a little bit of a head-scratcher of a pick at that spot, especially, you know, with cornerback becoming a looming need. And now, speaking of cornerback, you know, this is kind of off the topic of rookie minicamp in a way, but James Bradbury is no longer here. What do the Giants do? I mean, they have guys. It's not like, they, you know, the cupboard's bare. Aaron Robinson looks like he could be the guy – that they're going to lean on to, to maybe take that or compete for that role. I think a veteran's got to come in here. I, I'd be stunned if they don't add a veteran. But, I mean, is there anybody that is even close to what Bradbury brings? And I know last year was a little bit of an off year for him, but he was still a pretty good cornerback. The short answer to that, Patty, is no. There's no James Bradbury on this roster. And Bradbury, as Joe Shane I think tellingly said a couple of times, Bradbury is a good cornerback. James Bradbury is not a great cornerback. James Bradbury is not, you know, he's not Jalen Ramsey. He's not an all pro cornerback. He's a good NFL player. He'll be a useful player you know, on whatever good NFL team he happens to land on. He will help them and he would have helped the giants. Absolutely. But it was just a circumstance where the Giants, they needed the cap space more than they needed the player. And that was an unfortunate uh, leftover from the previous administration um, and from the way that, uh, that the Giants conducted the, the 2021 offseason. But there's nobody on this roster who's going to step in and play as well as Bradbury did immediately a year ago. And, and the reality of it is there's still no money for the Giants to go out and do a whole lot more than sign a veteran who's willing to take a minimum contract. So, and, and there aren't, there aren't great players available at this point anyway. So you're not going to get a Bradbury caliber corner, you know, at, at least a guy with that kind of experience, you're going to make do with whatever veteran you can bring in. You're probably going to make do with a veteran backup at safety as well. Um, you're going to give young guys like, like Aaron Robinson a chance on the outside. 
You're going to give a young guy like Rodarius Williams a chance on the outside. I don't know if the Giants will give Darnay Holmes a chance on the outside. I, I tend to feel like with Darnay Holmes, Dave Gettleman and Joe Judge drafted over Darnay Holmes by taking Robinson. Then Joe Shane and Brian Daybolt drafted over Darnay Holmes by taking Cordale Flott. So I don't know what they think of, of Darnay Holmes. But, but for me, whatever answers they have are probably going to come from within. Yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking, too. And again, Robinson, you know, the jury's still out on him because he had that injury which cut into his rookie season. But, you know, mm -hmm. hey, same thing happened with Xavier McKinney, and he turned out to be pretty good. So maybe the Giants might have something there. And they did retain Jerome Henderson, the defensive right. backs coach, which is a plus because he can continue developing those defensive backs. And he did a pretty good job with them, I thought, you know, he last did. year when mm -hmm. injuries were popping up all over the place. He basically, you know, that unit didn't fall completely apart. No, and I would prefer, to be honest with you, I would prefer to see Aaron Robinson play inside. But circumstance might lead to him having to play outside. And that's just, you know, that's that's just the deal for the Giants in 2022. It's just the way the roster is. And you and I talk about this all the time, Patty. Yes, the Giants had 11 draft picks. You know, yes, they had the opportunity to sign some players in free agency, but you cannot get everything that you want or need in one off season. It's a salary cap league. You have a limited number of, of draft choices. And yes, the Giants had 11. You just can't solve every need because the value is not always there. Maybe the, the free agent money is not always there. So you do the best you can. You bring in the best players you can. And then you try to find whatever other answers you need from, from within or from the waiver wire or, or however however you can. Yeah, and it's not always easy, especially now yeah. when, when the, the pickings are kind of on the slim side. Ed, let me ask you about the offensive line. They drafted a couple of young developmental offensive linemen in addition to Evan Neal, who I think we can all agree, unless he, he's injured, he's going to be the starting right tackle. Do you feel that this offensive line is finally fixed or you still have reservations about it? Patty, I would I would never use the word fixed. You you want to use the word fixed. And I remember Dave Gettleman famously saying, you know, we drafted three guys because they drafted Andrew Thomas and, and Shane Lemieux and, and Matt Parrott because they wanted to fix the offensive line once and for all. And that was a foolish thing to say because every single year is different. I think that what I feel really good about is I don't know if Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal are going to be all pro players somewhere down the line, but I feel really good about the fact that, that these are two highly drafted, very talented young men who should be able to bookend the offensive line you know, for a number of years. And I think I was talking to Brandon Thorne about the offensive line, and, and he basically said that this is very similar to how the Buffalo Bills built their offensive line. You get your bookend tackles however you get them. You mix and match with, you know, competent veterans, young players, as many competent pieces as you can on the inside and you let the competition and the depth play out. Now I would love it if the giants had been able to draft a developmental center, they weren't able to do that. Um, but you've got a competent player at right guard and Mark Lewinsky. You've got John Feliciano and probably Max Garcia as the backup center. And those are guys that have played a lot of snaps in the NFL you probably have a competition at left guard, which is the only spot that that uh, that I look at as open right now. And you know, as you and I have talked about previously, Patty, the best thing for me about this offensive line is there are a couple of young developmental pieces. You know, guys like Joshua Azudu and Marcus McKethan if he turns into a player. But the Giants drafted guys who who might be able to develop into useful pieces eventually. So. I feel better about the potential of this offensive line, 
but I would never say that it's fixed because things happen and things change so quickly. Right. And, you know, to your point, Feliciano, Garcia, I mean, Douglas, all signed to one year deals. Glowinski's the only one who has the multi multiple year deal. So you figure at the end of the year, the chances of them signing all those guys or re-signing all those guys on one year deals, probably not going to happen. So at some point, you're going to have to move them out, move somebody else in. And it's just a matter of who. But, you know, I guess a better way to put it, Ed, is the Giants with the offensive line, I guess, previously didn't really have a plan as right. to how to attack building it. Can we say safely that they have a plan now? I think we can say that it seems like, it feels like they have a, a plan, not only in the offensive line, Patty, but in a lot of ways. It seems like, you know, for me, for too many years, this organization from ownership on down has had this idea that, well, this is going to be the season that everything turns around. We're going to go all in. We're going to, we're going to build a winner around, you know, around 95 year old Eli Manning who can't get the ball down the field anymore. You know, we're going to, we're going to build a winner you know, by, by drafting a running back in the second round and surrounding Eli with as much talent as we possibly can. We're going to go all in in free agency, despite what that does to our, our cap the following year, because this is going to be the year that we're going to turn this around and make a playoff run. This is going to be the year that we're going to prove that we were right about Daniel Jones and, and that we're going to make the playoffs. Never in that entire time, I think did the Giants ever actually embrace the fact that they were bad, that that they didn't have a good roster, that they weren't a good football team, that they needed that they were in a rebuild. They they were in a rebuild without recognizing they were in a rebuild or acting like they were in a rebuild. And I think that what I feel good about is that I feel like this regime Obviously, they want to win in 2022 if they can, but this regime seems to actually recognize where this franchise is and where this roster is. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast, special edition of Locked on Giants podcast. But first, Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, but without the calories and without the sugar. Most Built Bars contain about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein, and they taste great. Built Bar offers 9 amazing flavors of nut and nut-free variety, plus a rotating limited time offering of different flavors that changes up every so many weeks. Head on over to BuiltBar.com today and see what their current flavor lineup looks like and use our special promo code LOCK15 to save 15% off your first order. Again, that's code LOCK15 to save 15% off your first order at BuiltBar.com. What are your expectations? I know it's still early. We still have to get through training camp. The roster is not fully complete yet because I think they have like 71 players. They're going to add more. You know, what are you expecting? What's realistic, do you think, to expect from this team? Oh, Patty, I don't know. I would I would hope that it's more than 4-13. and 13. I think it will be more than 4-13. and 13. Honestly, I feel like... I feel like as bad as things were last year, some of that was, I thought that was a better team than four and 13, at least, you know, initially on paper, I thought that was a, a team that, that should have approached seven or eight wins had it stayed reasonably healthy. And, and, and in all honesty, in, in the end, had it been coached better, but, you know, but you know, that I think, I'm hoping that this team, you know, wins seven games, eight games, looks like it's making progress, looks like a professional outfit, looks like it has players and pieces that it can build with and go forward with, you know, throughout the roster. We'll get an answer by the end of the year on Daniel Jones. We'll know what direction the Giants are going to have to go in, um, you know, at quarterback. So, and that obviously is a huge, huge piece, but I, that's what I want to see. I just want to see the Giants look like a professional team, 
look like they're going forward, look like they've identified some core players that, that they can go forward with and, and build a winning franchise with. Yeah, it's been a long time. And, you know, I keep saying I'm not holding out hope it's going to be this year for the Giants to go back to the playoffs, right. but I think they're they can be close. You know, you know it, it depends on what happens, obviously, with Daniel Jones and some other things. But um, if all things fall into place, they can be close. You know, we talked about we always look at the Buffalo Bills, Patty, because of where Joe Shane and, and Brian Dable came from. And I think what happened in Buffalo was and you know when Brandon Bean became GM there they had a surprisingly good first season i think they they went 9 and 7 they might have they might have made the playoffs i don't have it in front of me but they had a surprisingly good first season sort of fell back to reality a little bit in their second year but from year 3 on we see what the bills have become and that's really the goal you know for the giants is to is to build something that's that's sustainable through the draft, through developing players, through being smart, through making making better decisions than they've made the past few years. So, you know, we'll see if we'll see if they can get there. Let's hope they do, because I, I would like to think that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we're almost at the end of the tunnel here and that brighter days are ahead for the Giants. And that of tunnel. You know, that tunnel just keeps getting longer and longer know, and longer, Patty. <laughs> I know. Gosh, it's 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 a never-ending tunnel, and uh, fingers crossed that that they finally have a plan and that the plan unfolds. Now, obviously, we don't know about any you know unexpected occurrences, but gotta stay optimistic, and we gotta hope that Daniel Jones develops into the type of quarterback they think he can be. Otherwise, we're gonna start all over again next year. I'm afraid. Yeah, we are. Oh, goodness. So anyway, Edward, before we say goodbye, let everybody know what you got coming up on your shows, uh, on, your, on your, your website. Well, we'll see you at uh, Rookie Minicamp the next couple of days, Patty, on, on Friday and Saturday. I'll be there giving you uh, as much information as I can. We've already started our uh, annual series of uh, 90-man roster profiles of, of the guys that the Giants will bring to, to training camp. We're going to continue to crank out, uh, you know, film studies, analysis, whatever we can on our YouTube channel and bringing you uh, four or five shows a week on, on our uh, on our podcast. So uh, we'll be uh, filling as much of your time as you can stand throughout the offseason, as uh, as Patty will be doing uh, here on Locked on Giants and Giants Country as well. Four to five shows a week. How do you do it? I, I do you it by having for me. I no, I do it by only doing a couple shows and letting other people do the rest, Patty. I don't try to be a hero like you and do them all myself. Ah, uh, see, that's why I'm better than you because I'm a hero. I do it out every day see, without see. sometimes six or seven times. See, and, I, and I'm and I'm not going to argue with you, Patty. No, because you won't win. You I never, never win. I, I never, never do. win. I, I, ne I never do. I never do. Between <laughs> you need between, to, you need, to do, you need to get with my husband and find out how he wins some of the arguments. <sighs> I was just about to say, you know, but between you and my wife, I don't think I've won an argument in 30, <laughs> 35 years, something like that. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I believe All it. All right. But, all right. Edward, thank you as always for coming on. Giant fans, thank you for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen of the day or if watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Make sure you keep it here on the Locked on Giants podcast. Again, I will have additional programming on the rookie meeting camp. I'll have a wrap up. I'll have uh, Twitter Tuesday will return next week. I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've had that. That will be returning. And we'll continue to uh, hear from the various Locked On College hosts who are telling us about the various draft picks that we still haven't covered yet, but we will get to all that. We've got plenty of stuff to keep you guys busy. And also, don't forget to check us out on Giants Country where we have content we will be cranking out daily. So for Ed Valentine, I'm Patricia Trana again. Thank you and have a great one.